Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And the Skyrim we visit in The Elder Scrolls V is a chaotic land. As if the kingdom being torn apart by a civil war wasn't enough, Alduin, the terrifying dragon of legend who once lorded over mankind, has returned. With devious intentions. He's bent on nothing less than the total conquest of the known world and re-enslavement of man and elven kind. With the armies of Skyrim occupied and his strength growing by the second, only the Dragonborn stands in the World Eater's way. Crucial to Alduin's plans is his resurrection of Skyrim's long-dead Dragon Priests. Thousands of years ago, when he and his fellow dragons still ruled over the region, Dragon Priests were their loyal human servants, who ruled over vast cities and commanded armies in the name of their winged lords. Now the time has come for Alduin to call for their service once again. In gameplay, Dragon Priests typically act as powerful bosses for the Dovahkin to face off against in specific dungeons. However, many of them have unique backstories and histories that shouldn't be overlooked. So, why not explore that topic today, as we dive right into my top 5 Dragon Priests and their terrifying tales in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Starting off, we have Ragat. We can encounter this now undead foe and learn his story at the secluded ruins of Forelhost in the Mountains of the Rift. In the aftermath of the Dragon War, as mankind rose against their winged oppressors and drove them out of Skyrim, Raga and the small force of around a couple hundred he led at this monastery refused to accept defeat. Even after the last of the dragons were wiped out and most considered the Dragon War over, Ragat and his men continued to hold out and harass the victors. So, in the year 139 of the First Era, the king of a now newly independent Skyrim dispatched an army to finally wipe out Ragat and his remnant force. The ensuing siege would be an incredibly brutal one. We can read about it in the 4,000-year-old journal of Scorm Snowstrider, commander of the attacking army, as well as view Ragat's perspective through a variety of left-behind notes. Evidently, after weeks of ferocious fighting and being encircled, the Dragon Priest finally accepted he wouldn't be able to break the siege. But he also wasn't about to surrender so he devised a blood-chilling plan. Convinced that one day Alduin, his former master, would return again to wake his servants, Ragat ordered his alchemists to produce massive quantities of poison, and proceeded to force the entire monastery of Ferelhost, including innocent women and children, to take their own lives with it. He believed that this would both deny the attackers the satisfaction of a total victory, as well as somewhat preserve the bodies of his army, so when they were reawoken, they would be in a strong state. In his diary, Scorm Snowstrider describes the sheer terror his men felt when they finally broke into the structure, only to discover the entire population of Ferelhost had been dead for days. They were so utterly disgusted and demoralized, the attackers left without even looking for Ragat's body. They just couldn't bring themselves to bear the sight of so many innocent corpses. Thousands of years later, despite his wickedness, it looks like Ragat's gamble paid off. Alduin has returned, and woken him as well as his army, who once again stand ready to serve their Dark Lord. Alas, one thing Ragat didn't prepare for was the Dragonborn, and the player may have something to say about his plans. And so, 4,000 years after Scorm Snowstrider originally besieged this place, we can finally finish the job. Next on our list, we set sail for Solstheim. One of the most significant equipment sets offered by the Dragonborn DLC is Azadol's armor. It can be obtained during the quest Unearthed, where the player assists a Dunmer Miner in excavating the tomb of Azadol, an ancient dragon priest. As you dig deeper and deeper, you'll slowly piece together the armor set he created all the way back in the Merithic era. It includes some incredible artifacts, such as a pair of boots that allow the wearer to walk on water, rings that teach you entire new spells, and more. It's really cool. The quest ultimately concludes with you getting a hold of all of Azadol's artifacts. But the miner you're helping out becomes possessed, and your actions summon the Dragon Priest himself who will be quite upset at the fact that you're literally grave-robbing him, and an epic battle will ensue. 
But once he's been defeated, the quest will finally complete, and that sweet, sweet armor will be all yours. However, while a majority of players will be most excited about these new items, it's also very much worth learning about the Dragon Priest who created them in the first place. The Unearthed quest doesn't actually tell us a whole lot about him. However, the book Azadol's Descent, which becomes available once Dragonborn has been installed and can spawn in radiantly, reveals the priest's strange background. Azadol was originally born somewhere around four to 5,000 years ago, in the city of Sarthal in the Merethic Era. Sarthal was the first human settlement ever constructed in Skyrim, back when man shared the province with the Snow Elves. From a young age, Azadol was regarded as a prodigy in the arcane arts, quickly surpassing even the most experienced of mages in magical prowess. As he aged, Azadol eventually started a family in Sarthal, but soon found himself wanting more, and so he set off to study magic with the elves. The man was gone for a few years, and when he finally returned to Sarthal, he found nothing but a smoldering ruin. While he was away, the city was attacked and destroyed by snow elven armies. Among the casualties, his wife and children. Now a broken man, Azadol vowed vengeance on the snow elves, promising to do everything he could to bring their race to demise. And it wouldn't be long before he'd be given such a chance. Because shortly after he found his hometown in ruin, he learned of the arrival of Yskrimor and his 500 companions. An entire army that shared in his desire to avenge Sarthal. The mage joined Yskrimor's force, and together they made good on their ambition, winning battle after battle, and driving the Snow Elves to the brink of total extinction. After this victory, with nothing left to do, the mage somehow found himself in service to the dragons, who taught him a variety of new powers in exchange for his absolute loyalty. And thus, Azadol became a dragon priest. However, he wasn't satisfied. He developed an unquenchable thirst for knowledge, and sought out the help of Hermaeus Mora, Daedric god of knowledge who allowed him to spend time in Apocrypha, his plane of oblivion. While Apocrypha may have taught him much, it failed to satisfy Azadol's demand, and only drove him deeper and deeper into the depths of insanity. When he finally found his way out of oblivion, his fellow dragon priests learned of his dealings with Adedra and turned on him. Thus, the crazed Nord fled to Solstheim, where he was eventually captured and sealed away in the very tomb we find him in. Azadol's legend is a strange one. It shows how a simple man with a talent for magic could be pushed too far and become a true monster. Thankfully, even one of the most gifted mages in history is no match for the Dovahkin's Thum. At least, hopefully he's not. Otherwise, the world is about to face some serious problems with you out of the picture. Coming in at number three, we're actually staying on Solstheim to visit our next dragon priest. Valak the Jailer. We encounter this foe in the final chambers of Valak's tomb, south of Thirskmead Hall. We can learn about his story in the book The Guardian and the Traitor, as well as some dialogue with Skull Tribesmen. What's so unique about Valak when compared with his contemporaries is that he's the only dragon priest we know of who's not regarded as totally evil. In fact, he's described as a pretty fair and just man who may be responsible for saving the world. You see, back when Valak was still alive, and well before the dragon order that governed Skyrim had been overthrown, one dragon priest decided he was more powerful than his winged masters, and began conspiring to usurp power and conquer the world for himself. That dragon priest was Mirak. Now, as we all know from the events of the Dragonborn DLC, Mirak is an especially twisted fellow, and if he got his way, it's quite likely his rule would have been even more oppressive than that of the dragons. But it was Valak who somehow uncovered Mirak's plans before he could mobilize, and confronted him. The two then engaged in a spectacular battle that was so incredibly destructive, it's what's responsible for Solstheim separating from mainland Skyrim in the first place. When the ashes finally settled, Mirak's defeat was obvious. Though at the last minute, right before Valak could finish him off, 
Mirak was saved by the Daedric Prince Hermaeus Mora, who granted him sanctuary in Apocrypha, where he's been for the last four or five thousand years. Nonetheless, the war was over and Mirak's conspiracy was thwarted. Valak, for his part, was appointed Lord of the newly formed Island of Solstheim by his Dragon Masters, and it's said that his rule was fair, and his time saw the people of Solstheim prosper, free of oppression or atrocities. Indeed, the Skull we meet in Skyrim speak particularly highly of him. This legacy sharply contrasts with that of Valak's cruel and even sadistic peers. While all the other dragon priests were off torturing innocent people, he stood alone as a beacon of virtue and nobility. So, when you do disturb his tomb and awake him from the dead, be sure to give him a quick, honorable defeat. He's definitely earned it. For fourth spot, we head back to the mainland to face off against a character that's not nearly as righteous or complicated as our last one. This is Hevnorak. He can be found in the ancient Nordic ruins of Valthum. In life, to put it mildly, Hevnorak was a mad and sadistic individual. It said he was exceptionally good at mind control magic and was able to build an army of enthralled servants. For those he couldn't control through the arcane arts, fear was just as good of a weapon. He ensured that any of his subjects that spoke or acted out in a way he didn't like would face the most horrifying punishments imaginable. And all throughout the ruins of Balthum, we can find what's left of the madman's instruments of torture, as well as the remains of a few victims. As Avnorak aged, he grew obsessed with the concept of his resurrection. He knew that one day his service would be called upon again, and made meticulous plans to preserve his body, going so far as to drain much of his blood and have it stored in vessels to be waiting for him when he reawoke. When we first arrive at Valthum, we'll notice that things didn't go as expected for Hevnorak though. While he's been resurrected, the spirit of an ancient Nord warrior named Valdar caught onto his plans, and has been guarding the dungeon, using his spectral powers to keep the Dragon Priest contained. Valdar's ghost will inform the player that, while his efforts have been sufficient thus far, Hevnorak's getting stronger by the day, and the spirit's unsure if he can keep him trapped. It'll be up to you to venture inside, and slay the undead lich once and for all, before he can escape. Do so, and you'll not only be putting an end to this Dragon Priest's ambitions, but more importantly, you'll be allowing Valdar's spirit to get some much-earned rest. And finally, last on our list, we have the curious case of Otar the Mad. He ruled over the city of Ragnvald, a once booming metropolis thousands of years ago, now little more than an ancient Nordic ruin in the Reach. Otar began his reign as a pretty decent ruler, said to have been fair and even accomplished in battle. But as time went on, dark forces began to corrupt Otar's mind, and the nobility soon began to fade. He was consumed by total insanity, and began subjecting his people, who he once treated with great respect and fairness, to terrible cruelties. Game of Thrones fans may recognize a bit of a parallel to the Mad King here. Anyway, despite being crazy, Otar was still an exceptionally talented mage, and no one was able to defeat him and end his tyranny. That was until two Nord heroes history would remember as Serek and Torsten, together were able not to utterly kill Otar, but managed to seal him in a sarcophagus permanently. After this victory, the two pledged to guard their prisoner for all of eternity. When we enter Ragnvald, we'll find Sarek and Torsten's Draugr still protecting the area. They kept their oath. After defeating the two, we can loot their inventories for the keys to open up the sarcophagus and face off against Otar for ourselves. And much like with Regat, finish a job that was started 4,000 years ago. And with that, we are going to wrap up my top 5 Dragon Priests and their terrifying tales in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Thanks for watching, everybody. Which of these cruel characters do you think boasted the greatest or most intriguing background? And what other topics should I tackle next? Leave a comment down below. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Again, thanks for stopping by. Big shout out to all these lovely Patreons appearing on screen now, and I hope to catch you all.
in my next video. Peace out, everyone.